Hello, welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today we're going to be working on a few tips and tricks for doing a better laser cut or you know getting a better product at the end. So we're going to do a few tips and tricks, probably three um, of my favourite ones I've learnt through using the K40 that's just made my life easier. Right, we'll start off with the first one that I use the most often and it's just for cutting quicker. If you have a piece of um, material that takes two passes this little tip here will show you how to do it a lot quicker. Let's get on. Okay, so the secret to making a very good project is, look at this, oh, intricacy, yes. Okay, so, why is that in that color? So we're just gonna make a very, very simple circle, just to demonstrate, um, what size is this? Um, let's do 25 by 25. If I was to just save it now and put, send it straight to K40 Whisperer, um, it would then show me an outline of the entire page to tell me where it is. If you come down to Document Properties, which just opens up wherever the hell it wants, read page, um, resize page to content, click, and now look, it will make it the exact size of it. Okay, we'll save it, and then we'll open it up in uh, K40 Whisperer. Okay, let's have a look. Now, I'm not sure if you get the same problems as I do, but I quite often will find that K40 Whisperer opens up 20, no, about 40% of the time, there we go. 40% uh, of the time, it will open up immediately, no problems. Other times, it will just hang up and take 10 minutes, and then it opens up, or it just goes unresponsive. And I'm not sure if it's um, my computer, or because I've got a few problems with my computer, so I'm not sure if it's the computer, or if it's something else, I'm not sure. Before we do anything else, I just wanted to say that this is now the exact outline of this. So if we were to do uh, tracing the boundaries, uh, it would trace just around this. Whereas if we'd left it as the full page, it would have done that full page trace. So you wouldn't have known exactly where this is. So one other thing I didn't realize was, most people use these to move the laser around, um, move the laser head to start from wherever, but I found you can actually just drag it and drop it. I did, don't know if everyone else knows this, I just accidentally did it one day and I was like, oh, happy days. And I find this more intuitive, I sort of know exactly where that is in space on the laser compared to if I'm going, it's about there. Now doing it that way does work, but I mean, it's just it just makes life easier in my opinion. Right, let's cut this out and I'll be back in a second. Right, as this is a circle and it's small, it shouldn't take too long. But if it's a more intricate design, it's going to take you quite some time to cut out in some cases. And what happens is, obviously, it's going to cut round on its first pass. And once it's finished, all it's going to do is it's going to go back to the start and wait for your command to do another cut, which I'll press now. Damn, close enough, won't I? Um, right, and then it'll cut through. Now, imagine if you've got multiple objects on the same thing and you have to keep pressing cut it it does take its time so let me show you how to deal with that we've got our little object now and um, obviously just the circle again and all we need to do is go up to edit down to duplicate which the shortcut key is control D and then save go back over to K40 and press reload design that's it I've moved the laser up a bit and all I need to do is click um, cut once and it will do it all for me. It will go round and when it gets to the end of its initial job, rather than going back to the start, it will just carry on and do a second cut. And this really does cut down a lot of time if you're doing certain files, you know. And that's it, job's done. Tip two is cleaning your product up, making sure that they are ready to sell if that's what you want to do, or just making them look their best. Right, the next problem is the scorching and the um, marks around sort of like your cuts, or when you've cut out something and you're left with this nasty, gnarly colouring. A lot of people say to use vinegar, and I've tried it and it works okay, but I find that vinegar the smell lasts longer in it and it doesn't dry as quick so there's chances of damaging the wood. I use acetone or nail polish remover and an old rag and it works wonders. One second. So I literally just get the rag wet and we'll do a before and after comparison so if I put that there let's zoom in a bit. So you can actually see the acetone already drying but I 
Okay, so you get the idea. Um, that isn't as good as it gets. Let's do one more. But that's literally, I've left that for two minutes. Um, I won't, won't leave it in real time. I will speed it up just to stop people dying completely of boredom. Let's just get rid of that bit as well. Okay, I'll leave that there. I can't be bothered to wait for it any longer. But that takes about 20 minutes to completely dry. And then it's um, exactly the same colour as this, but obviously not... Um, it's, this is still a little bit tacky to the touch. But also the smell of the acetone completely disappears immediately afterwards as well. So unlike vinegar, which the smell I see, I, I think smells a little bit strong for quite some time, this is just a bit quicker. Right, this is side by side about 10 minutes later. Sorry about the one on the left, that is just ripped from the actual video. I didn't take a photo beforehand. The other one is a high res photo. Right, tip three is possibly and probably the most important, and that is keeping your laser um, clean. Not the actual um, innards of the laser, but the, your mirrors and your lens. I had my laser for about three weeks, and I noticed that, you know, I'd been doing lots of practicing, and I hadn't upgraded anything. It didn't have air assist or any of that kind of thing. And I noticed that my laser would seem to be a lot stronger if I'd used it for a while, as if it needed time to heat up. And I suddenly realised that I thought um, there must be something on the laser, um, on the lens. Um, so I took it all apart and I cleaned the lens. The lens was in an awful state, the mirrors were dirty as well. And what had happened was all the smoke and all the soot and all the um, resins from the wood and all that sort of stuff was just floating up and covering the lens. And then when it got hot enough, it was able to penetrate through it. You know, it had melted enough out of the way. But I cleaned it up and literally I was able to take half a volt off the actual uh, power and it would still do the same cuts. So, you know, I was, I was using a lot more um, oomph of the laser to get through the gunk on the lens. Um, so I was, you know, I was, I was, in essence, I was using my laser um, at a higher power for longer, so it wouldn't have lasted as long. So let me show you my before and after photos of all the bits and bobs, uh, lasers and mirrors. And um, as I say, I went from needing it on 1.5 volts. I use, I use volts because I've upgraded mine so I can check the voltage quite, quite easily. Um, 1.5 volts. I went from 1.5 to 1.9 volts down to dead on one volt. So it was quite a miraculous difference. And that was literally after six weeks of using it with no air assist. Now I've got air assist, it will take longer to get to that state, but it's still something that you need to do. Um, one thing that's really important before I go any further, let me just give you a quick warning. Lenses are made of zinc selenide and this is highly toxic. It has to be made of this because you can basically engrave on glass and if there's, the lens is made of glass it would just start cutting holes in it, wouldn't it? Um, this stuff is toxic and um, when handling it I'd advise wearing gloves. And as it gets older, it'll start to get uh, decay and it will start to get like almost like bubbles in it. Um, when this happens, buy a new laser lens immediately. Um, that's when it starts to refract light and it starts to heat the lens up. And as it heats it up, it will give off zinc, uh, zinc and selenium fumes, which will actually cause you very, very bad problems. Uh, selenium fumes can make your hair brittle, cause neurological disorders and all sorts of other stuff. So just be careful. And as I say, if you notice uh, marks on your lens that you can't just clean off, then get a new lens. But cleaning your lens um, often should help avoid this because obviously if there's big amounts of dirt on your lens, you may find that that causes it to heat up and start giving off these fumes anyway. Right, well this is the mirror that is closest to the laser head and I couldn't believe that this could even still work. Um, this is in an awful state and as I say, this is only six weeks of using it. So I cleaned it up using um, acetone nail polish remover, uh, nail varnish remover just like um, I do for my actual um, laser cuts and this is what it turned out to be like. A much better situation here but um, as you'll see there's lots of marks on the mirror and I think well the piece of metal it is but um, I think that is where 
it got so dirty that it was allowing it to actually um, damage the reflective surface. So, as I say, clean them as often as you can. Uh, it takes a couple of minutes, literally a couple of minutes. And it will save you money, it will save you time, and it will also save your laser from getting too hot to, you know, fire la um, laser beams through all this crud. And this is the laser, bless its heart. It was, well, I could barely see through it. It was awful. Um, so I picked it up using gloves, um, being real careful with it, and used a cotton bud, like an earbud. And I just cleaned it off with a bit of nail varnish remover again. And um, it came up looking amazing, actually. And instantly I could tell the difference. It was just insane how much of a difference it made. But it's obvious it would make a difference. You know, it it was easier for the light to get through. And this is it afterwards. I was going to clean the actual container that holds it, but I couldn't be bothered. Um, and yeah, that's just how easy it was. It it honestly took no time at all, and it made the greatest difference of all the all the upgrades I've done to my um, K40. Keeping that lay, um, the lens clean has been the one thing that I have found the most beneficial throughout the whole thing. Don't get me wrong, I've done a lot of upgrades and without them it would be nowhere near as good as it is, but keep your lens clean and it will look after you. Okay, I think I will leave it there then. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I've got some huge projects come in um, for the K40 and um, other upgrade ones. Um, so if you are interested in that, make sure you subscribe. Uh, I might be writing some stuff on Facebook or Instagram, you know, just updates and see how I'm getting on and so on and so on. So if you are interested in those, just pop on over. Links are always in the description. Um, I've linked a video down in the description too from a guy who talks a lot more about the dangers of the lasers. Um, and he's got quite a few good videos on the K40. I've seen quite a few of them. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you again next week. Bye for now.